Hi, Carl again. Thanks for stopping by for today's new video. Basically, today what we're going to talk about in this particular session is we're going to talk about the importance of determining what it is that will help make you a success in real estate. If you choose to be a real estate agent, then there's a couple things that you need to understand. First and foremost, to be successful in real estate, there's really only three things that you need to do. Okay, and I'll go ahead and I'll explain it to you the way Floyd explained it to me. When I say Floyd, I refer to Floyd Wickman, been around for a really long time, good trainer. The way that Floyd explained it is he called it his three part formula. Okay, three part formula. All right, whenever you're trying to figure out what it is that you're supposed to do for the course of a week. If you focus on this three-part formula, it will really make it very crystal clear what you need to do to be successful. So the first thing he needed to, he said that you needed to do, number one, is go ahead and focus on each week, each week, all right, bring in a saleable listing. Now what he meant by that was simply this, that if you did nothing else all week, okay, but try to go ahead and bring in a saleable listing first, all right, then that would really do you well. And the reason why is simply this, because when you have listings, you control the inventory. And when you control the inventory, it's, it's, it's a lot easier for you to work. So for example, if you've been in real estate more than a day, you know it's a lot easier to control say four or five listings than four or five buyers. Four or five buyers are, will run you ragged, okay? But you can control the number of listings a lot easier if you have just, a, you know, if you just have those core, because then at that point, not only are you trying to sell your listings, and uh, obviously yourself, but you've got the other four or 5,000 agents in your marketplace that are trying to sell them for you, okay? So each week, bring in a saleable listing first. If you did that, 52 weeks a year, all right, or maybe you took two weeks off in a year and you did 50, think about it this way, just the sheer numbers alone, 50 listings, okay, if only half of them sold, that's 25, and 25, you're doing pretty good, okay, your income is going to be in the $50,000 range or more, all right, the next thing he said is separate the lookers from the buyers, Separate the lookers from the buyers. And the, and the reason why is because the lookers will spend an awful lot of time wasting. Now, you can go ahead and qualify these people very, very quickly and very, very simply. If you have a phone call, a sign call, an ad call, however you generated that lead, they're calling you up and they're asking you about a property that you have for sale or the one that you've advertised, then how you separate the lookers from the buyers are simply by a few very simple questions. And you may want to write these down. If you're a new agent, this will be of a hope of, of, of value to you. But basically, what you'd want to say, the first thing is, great, when are you planning on making a move? You know, uh, Obviously, if they're planning on making a move in the next nine months, then you don't want to really do anything with them. If they say, well, they're on a lease for the next six months, they, they can't move until June because they're renting and their lease is up then, you probably don't want to spend any time with them showing property. If, on the other hand, they say, well, you know, we're on a month-to-month -month lease and we'd like to go ahead and stop renting, that's somebody you want to spend time with. On the other hand, if they're saying, well, look, you know, we're getting a divorce and, and uh, you know, I'm just going to want to buy something cash, that's a really good lead for you, okay? So separate the lookers from the buyers. The next thing you can ask them is, were you planning on paying cash or were you going to need to get financing? If they decide that they're going to need to get financing, then you can send them to your lender, all right, and have your lender do them from a, from a, a purely financial standpoint to qualify them, to see if they are actually worthwhile. If they have gone ahead and and spoken with a lender, great, maybe I know them. Who is your lender? Well, it's Joe Blow over at ABC Mortgage. Great, I know Joe. All right, so how long have you been looking for a home? Well, if we've been looking for, say, let's say a year, okay, chances are they're not too motivated. 
But if they say something like, well, we just started this last weekend. Okay, fantastic. Have you seen any of the great deals out there right now? Some of the REOs, some of the short sales. Well, let's get together. Let's come into the office and talk about what it's going to take to find you the right home at the right price. Okay, so that's how you can quickly separate the lookers from the buyers. If they're not going to go ahead and give you the time of day, then they're not all that motivated. You don't want to deal with them anyway. Remember, this is simply nothing more than a numbers game. Then the third thing is show and sell, show and sell in house. inventory first if there is ever a deal that's going to break down if there's ever a deal that will DFT it will be because you're dealing with a co-broke all right always try to show your own company listings first and the reason why is simple because if you have someone in your office okay that you have to deal with on a daily basis if there's any problems they will be able to tell you right away there'll be no delay if there's any problems that you guys can work on, you can communicate a lot easier. Not to mention the fact that it is good for your company. In these days, of course, brokerages want to make sure that they make as much money as possible so they can offer as many services as they can to you. And let's just remember the old saying, if your dad's rich, you'll never go hungry. Okay. So always be sure to go ahead and sell, show your own in-house listings first, if possible. Okay? So hopefully those, this three-part formula will be very helpful to you. When you're trying to figure out what you're going to do for the day, then take a look at this. Remember, each week bring in a saleable listing first. If you do nothing else, work on that, and you'll be successful. Second, once you've done that, then move on to separating any lookers that you have from the buyers. Go ahead and make sure that you're working with high quality prospects. And then last, take those buyers, show and sell in-home listings first if possible. Hopefully you've been uh, learning quite a bit from these series. If so, then feel free to go ahead and like down at the bottom, subscribe and comment. We'd love to go ahead and help you in any way we can. Thanks a lot and have a powerful day.